to us. What should your name be? The glory. Not to us. Not to us. What should your name be? The glory. Not to us. Not to us. What should your name be? The glory. What should your name be? The glory. What should your name be? The glory. There's been a 150% rise in the Chinese government's persecution of Christians in just one year. We don't carry arms. We will not carry arms. We don't teach carrying arms. But we can call on God. Our God is bigger than human ammunition. Hey everybody, welcome to the premiere episode of The Fifth Seal, episode 42. That sounds a little strange. Premiere episode, episode 42. Let me explain. The Fifth Seal is what was formerly the Persecuted Church Awareness Month podcast, where we count down through the year uh, from 50 to 31, the World Watch List, the uh, worst countries for Christian persecution throughout the world. The World Watch List lists from 50 down to 1. So from January to the end of October, we count down twice a month. We do an episode where we are going down through the uh, from 50 to 31. And then November, being Persecuted Church Awareness Month, we count down 30 through number 1. One episode every day of the week. So since we're not doing it just one, one month out of the year anymore, I decided and I'm trying to, you know, kind of, work up the, the uh, production value and so on. We gave it a new name and we gave it a, a intro video and stuff like that. So we're working these things out. I keep saying we, it's me. I'm a one man show over here. Um, but the Royal we, the Holy Spirit, I, I hope is, is working in me to do this, to bring this to you. So we'll keep it at we. <laughs> um, so gave it a new name giving it some new production value and so on. But again, we are we are sticking to the same thing. We are counting down through the world watch list. We Right now we are at number 42 on the world watch list. And then I'll bring a story of persecution from somewhere around the world every day and some prayer points and we'll pray. Nothing else in that, in that sense has changed. We are going to look at countries. We're going to pray uh, and we're going to uh, hold up our brothers and sisters around the world who are being persecuted. So why the fifth seal? Um, I'm sure a lot of you have already figured it out. Revelation chapter 6, starting at verse 9, When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain for the word of God and for the witness they had borne. They cried out with a loud voice, O sovereign Lord, holy and true, how long before you will judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? Then they were each given a white robe and told to rest a little longer until the number of their fellow servants and their brothers should be complete, who were to be killed as they themselves had been. So the fifth seal is just referring to the martyrs, martyrs who have been uh, killed um, for their faith in Christ, for the witness that they have of Jesus Christ. Um, of course, we, we talk beyond just those who are martyred. We talk about all kinds of persecution, but that's where the name comes from. So I hope it's something you guys like. I hope it, it you know, it, I mean, I'm always open to take new suggestions. I can make new videos. I can do all that stuff. So if you're watching this, if you have a, a better name, let me know. But for now, we're calling it the fifth seal, and that's where we're going to stick to it. So, all that being said, let's jump in. Let's talk about uh, persecution around the world. Um, I'm sure most of you have heard this one already. Um, I mean, we're, everybody's kind of uh, taken aback by the, the horrible uh, event that happened on Easter. I talked a little bit about that in my regular podcast so I wanted to, to look at this one. We know that there's been all kinds of stuff going on in Nigeria over the last, since January. There's been a lot. Well, uh, uh, April um, April 14th, so the Sunday before Easter, um, Palm Sunday, uh, there in, uh, and this is for Morningstar News, and I'll just read the story. Muslim Fulani herdsmen killed 17 Christians who had gathered after a baby dedication at a church in central Nigeria including the mother of the child, sources said. 
Safaratu John Kabiru Ali, the mother of the baby, was slain in the attack on Sunday, April 14th, in Kanushu Numa Village in Nasarawa State in Akawanga County, which also took the lives of people ranging in age from 10 to 80. The baby's father, John Kaburu Ali, was shot and is in critical condition, sources said. He is receiving treatment at the intensive care unit of the Federal Medical Center in Kefi in Nasarawa State. The attack took place at about 7 p.m. as Christians in the predominantly Christian community gathered to eat after the child was dedicated that morning at the Ruhayana Baptist Church in the village. The massacred Christians were buried on Wednesday, April 17th after a funeral service at the Baptist Church. A resident in Akawanga town told, who lost relatives in the shooting, Jacob Tansy, told Morningstar News that 17 Christians were killed, including 10 members of the Ruhayana Church. Baptist Church, five members of Evangelical Reformed Church of Christ, one member of the Evangelical Church winning all, and a musician playing for guests. Tansy identified those kills, killed as Ali Nikini, 80, Godi Kaku, 13, Afeniki Keiko, 10, Matthew Emmanuel, 28, Tafaya Baya, 17, Sarakuna Haruna, 21, Amos Julius, 60, Mary Amos, 40, Sunday Adebayo John, 21, Talatu Mada, 40, Saratu Kabiri John, 21, Justina Barao, 60, Simon Afani, Anfani, 37, Kedon Sule, 20, Ayuba Bulus, 11, Haruna Bawa, 22, and the, mu the musician Samami Anda Andaha, 28. He also said eight Christians, including the host of the event, John Kabiru Ali, were wounded in the attack. They include members of various congregations of Baptist, Catholic, and ERCC churches. So, um, this was seemed to be the worst one until the attacks on Sri Lanka happened on Easter Sunday. So, Holy Week, uh, you know, and then Monday, we saw Notre Dame Cathedral burn down, which was initially suspected to be some kind of persecution, some kind of Islamic attack was the assumption. Turns out it was just a short. Um, but so a lot of stuff happened this year. Holy Week from the 14th to the 21st saw some crazy stuff going on. Brothers and sisters around the world who are being persecuted for their faith these, these people after a baby dedication, um, dedicating a baby to the Lord, the baby's mother um, w was killed. So, um, yeah, uh, continue praying for our brothers and sisters in Nigeria. It's, um, it, 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 it doesn't look like it's getting any better there, and we're going to see more and more things coming out of Nigeria from Boko Haram and these Fulani militants. Um, as time goes on, we're going to, I'm going to be talking a lot about what's going on there just because of the, the amount of attacks and the, uh, the intense activity, uh, of persecution going on in that nation. So be praying for our brothers and sisters in Nigeria. So on the world watch list, we are world watch list number 42, Malaysia. Uh, the region is Asia. Persecution type, Islamic oppression. Persecution level is high. Population, uh, 32,042,000 people. Of those, about 2 million, almost 3 million are Christians. Excuse me. The main religion is Islam. The government is a federal parliamentary, parliamentary constitutional monarchy. And the leader of Malaysia is King Mohammed V. Uh, Christians in Malaysia and other minor minorities are hopeful that life under their new, more moderate government will improve. However, the Constitution still prohibits converting from Islam to other religions, and the courts still often favor Muslims over minority group members in legal matters such as divorce or child custody. In addition, women who convert are often threatened with rape or forced marriage. Uh, how, some examples of how Christians are, are suffering. Ethnic Malay people are expected to be 
Muslim and therefore face the most severe forms of Christian persecution when they convert to Christianity. Anyone who deviates from their native beliefs not only goes against the Constitution, but also against society at large, including its power holders. Roman Catholics and Methodists are often watched by authorities, but non-traditional Protestant groups active in testifying about their faith are targeted more. Uh, a couple examples, all children in state-run nursery and primary schools are required to attend Islamic education. In state schools, Muslim pupils, including Christians with a Muslim background, are required to attend Islamic classes. At the university level, Islamic courses are also mandated. In February of 2017, Pastor Raymond Coe was abducted in broad daylight. The country's Human Rights Commission has attempted to investigate this incident, but has been prevented from freely, freely proceeding with their investigation. So some prayer points uh, for Malaysia. Pray for Christian children who are required to attend Islamic education courses required by state-run schools. Pray the new government will pursue those responsible for the abduction of three Christian workers abducted in 2016 and 2017. And pray for Evangelical, Baptist, Pentecostal, and other groups who face monitoring, intimidation, and harassment. Pray for the government. Pray the government will pave the way for independent investigation of Pastor Coe's disappearance and bring his abductors to justice. Let's pray. Father, thank you. Uh, I just thank you for this, this medium, um, the fact that we can... Uh, bring awareness to what's going on with our brothers and sisters instantaneously through the internet lord and i praise you that uh that it's it's for your glory that we even do this podcast god so praise you for the ability the um uh the holy spirit to give us the uh the courage and um it's not really that courageous to do a podcast uh the um just the compassion the desire to uh, bring awareness to our persecuted brothers and sisters around the world. So we praise you, God. It's, it's by you and for you and for your glory that we do this. Uh, Father, we lift up our brothers and sisters in Nigeria. We lift up this, this family. Um, this, we pray for, for healing for this baby's father um, who is injured. We pray for healing because uh, this child has lost its mother, dedicated to the Lord one day and, and the, the, the same day lost uh, mother the the this man lost his wife um, and so many there lost loved ones and family members God we pray for the Christians in that area of Nigeria um, Lord we pray that that you would protect our brothers and sisters from uh, Boko Haram and the the Fulani militants that are are so bent on on persecuting Christians because they hate you uh, so we pray for for peace. We pray pray for protection for them there. We pray that they would have the courage, that they would have the boldness, to continue to share their faith and to preach the gospel. Uh, that they know that they're willing to lay down their lives for there. Lord, we we lift up our brothers and sisters in Malaysia. We pray for these kids that are are forced to go through Islamic education. We pray for their parents that they would have the wisdom and the knowledge of truth to. Uh, to counter the the teachings in the Islamic classes with with truth and and good solid theology, Lord, we do pray that this new government there will uh, pursue those responsible for abductions in this this area in Malaysia, the three Christian workers who were abduct, abducted, and we pray that um, there would be an investigation into Pastor Ko's disappearance as well. Uh, we pray for those churches who are monitored. Um, followed and and essentially controlled by the government and we pray for our brothers and sisters who have converted out of islam uh to christianity that they would be safe and protected and and not persecuted by family or government persecuted or prosecuted for for leaving uh their their one-time faith in islam to their true salvation um, in Christianity, Lord, and so we do lift them up. We we pray that you continue to to strengthen the faith of our brothers and sisters around the world, and we pray that you continue to bring them to our minds uh, to pray for them when when needed, Lord, on a day to day basis. That we would continue to lift up our brothers and sisters around the world who are persecuted, who are murdered, beaten, imprisoned, simply because of their faith in you. And we pray that in all of this that you will continue to receive the glory from all of it because it's in your name and for your glory that we pray, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.
So thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. As usual, uh, invite people to uh, like the Facebook page and invite people to come and join in the group. Uh, subscribe to the podcast. Uh, share the links. Um, if you know anybody who's just willing to want to pray for the persecuted church around the world, share these videos with them so they have that um, and so they can continue to pray for our brothers and sisters around the world. And as always, preach the gospel at all times. Use words. They are necessary. And until next time, Soli Deo Gloria.